Yeah, but what time is it? It's 8 o'clock, Costello. We're only here for PDQ gasoline here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello show. It's the new transcribed Abbott and Costello show with a new singing discovery, Susan Miller and Maddie Mel Nick Orchestra, and yours truly, Michael Roy. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Well, you're late again. Oh, I couldn't help it, Abbott. I jumped in my car, drove down to Long Beach, over to Santa Ana, up to Las Vegas, down through the mountains, and here I am. Well, why didn't you come straight here? Abbott, did you ever try to drive through Los Angeles? <laughs> oh, uh, never mind that. Who was that girl I saw you talking to outside the studio? Oh, she's a French war bride. She just came from France to join her husband. She has quintuplets. By job? <laughs> no. By private first class Carl Schwartz of no. Madison, New Jersey. <laughs> Costello, you're the world's biggest idiot. You're only saying that because everybody else does. Oh, well, I've been studying that broken-down snipe school of yours. Detective work. Detective work. All right, let's see what you know about crime detection. Now, I'm a beautiful woman spy. I, I was an international figure in the last World War. I have uh, soft blonde hair, shapely legs, and a seductive feet. Now, what's my name? Who cares? What's your phone number? No, no, no. You and your whole family are a bunch of morons. Oh, yeah? Uncle Mike is smart. He's got a new job up on top of Lookout Mountain. Job on Lookout Mountain? What does he do? Well, he sits there all day, and when another mountain comes along, he yells, Look out! Look out! <laughs> I, live, I, live, I live I'll never know what your Aunt May ever saw in him. Oh, it was wonderful, Abbott. When Uncle Mike proposed Aunt May, you should have seen him. He got up on one knee. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean he got down on one knee? No, up. He was in a saloon at the time. <laughs> he is collecting antiques as a hobby. He's got a wheel off a Roman chariot, an axle from an old ox cart, a chassis from a covered wagon, and the first motor from a Stanley steamer. So where does he keep all this stuff? Keep it. He drives it. <laughs> now, wait, Costello, wait. Relax and listen a minute. My friend here has, has got something interesting to say. Once a month on every oil executive's desk is a scientific analysis of many, many brands of gasoline. The findings of an independent testing laboratory outfit reported to all the industry. And any petroleum engineer would have to admit that this PDQ gasoline looks mighty, mighty good in the hard light of scientific analysis. We get a kick out of this at PDQ because it reminds the big boys that when we talk seriously of PDQ quality, PDQ power, PDQ speed... We're giving you straight facts, not just making up pretty words. PDQ makes its own gas at its own PDQ refinery. Shucks, we even have our own oil well. And so our gasoline is our own product. And the PDQ gasoline you use in your car is the first and finest product we make. What this means in extra mileage, more power, and quick performance in your car is something that will please you mightily. So uh, shall we plan on filling you up next time with PDQ? While you ponder this, here's the Abbott and Costello gas station gang. I know that you know Abbott and Costello are the funniest guys on ABC. But here's Maddie Malnick and his orchestra to repeat that phrase for one musical minute.
family you come from, Costello. We're a happy family, Abbott. The Costello girls married the Bozos, the Fiellos, the Murphys, the Mulligans. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mulligan is a stew. My sister knew it, but she married him anyway. <laughs> Did you drop in at Susan Miller's house New Year's Eve? Yes, but her mother didn't treat me very nice. She wanted me to help her do the housework. She did? Yep. She said, step into the kitchen. I'll mop up the floor with you. <laughs> what did you do? I stuck my tongue out at her. Oh, wait a minute. That's not nice. I couldn't help her. I always do that when she's choking me. <laughs> Why do you continually run after Susan? Before I was married, I didn't run after my wife. Abbott, a mouse trap doesn't run after a mouse. But it catches him just the same. <laughs> All right, forget it, Costello. This year, why don't you get married and settle down? Well, I did ask Susan Miller to marry me, and she said she would in a certain place. In a certain place? Yes, I never heard of it. It's called in a pig's eye. <laughs> I... Must be near Pismo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, I mean, you let Susan push you around. You let everybody push you around. Why don't you stand up to people and tell them what you think? I do. I stood up to Truman. What happened? Nothing. She went right on singing. I... <laughs> don't let me down. Please don't let me down. You just can't let me down. Who are you? Oh, just an old short skirt. <laughs> uh, that was Abbott's nephew, folks. Oh, now quit picking on him, Costello. Why don't you be nice to him? Yes, I'll invite him over to my house tonight and open up a gas jet. Now, look. <laughs> He's not a help to us, Costello. He's a good actor. In our new picture, The Noose Hangs High, he played a, played a bit. In our last picture, he played a bit? Yes, he's a two-bit actor. All right, now listen. <laughs> interrupting. He's back again. What do you want? Mr. Costello, you're one of the funniest comedians and one of the finest stars in the entire motion picture industry. Oh, Norman, you're just saying that. No, I'm not. I'm reading it. <laughs> Abbott, I'd like to take him for a long walk on a short pier. Now, wait. A minute. <laughs> you're just jealous because he's a better actor than you. Is that so? I'll have you know that I played with Lauren Bacall in Dark Passage. I saw that picture, and I didn't see you with Lauren Bacall. Well, who do you think turned out the light in the passage? <laughs> Look, the director didn't think so much of you at Eagle Lion. He did so. I heard him say that my performance was very educational. He said your performance was educational? Well, not exactly. But when he saw me on the screen in New Science High, he said, Well, this ought to teach us a lesson. <laughs> in pictures anyway. Listen, ever since I was a little boy, I want to be a dramatic actor. You know, Abbott, I started off in life as a little boy. Well, everybody starts off in life as a little boy. My sister didn't. <laughs> Hello, boy. Well, it's Susan, Susan Miller. <laughs> Why, Susan, isn't that a pretty dress you're wearing? Nothing. It's just an old Mother Hubbard. Well, don't look now, but your cupboard is bare. <laughs> Costello, that's no way to talk to Susan. Be sweet to her. Say something nice. Susan, you are the very quintessence of feminine pulchritude, and your devastating beauty overshadows any other beauty, and it suffeats my very soul with scintillating palpitations, ostentatious trepidation. <laughs> Oh, Costello, when you know me better, you'd want to take that all back. Oh, no, I won't. I had a couple of times trying to get it out. <laughs> uh, don't pay any attention to uh, H-I-M. <laughs> Let's you and I go out on a uh, D-A-T-E. How about T-O-N-I-G-H-T? Now, wait a minute. That ain't fair. You're using words with letters in them. <laughs> uh, Susan, you're supposed to be my girl. It's no need to pursue me, Costello. I want a man who has lived. Well, I've lived. I mean recently. <laughs> Very funny. Keep it up, Susan, and you'll be back in a child's window flipping tension. Hello, oh, Costello. Don't you know that women only use men as tools? Do you use men for tools? Certainly. Yeah, well... <laughs> Let me know, Susan, if you ever need advice. <laughs> uh, here, Rabbit, you take the derby. I'll go out and sit in the audience. No, 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 no. Don't get, don't get sore, Costello. I, I've got to get off, get off a joke here once in a while, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Better get off that one before it hatches. Huh? <laughs>
Susan, if I were a single man, if I was a single man, I'd ask you to marry me. Well, that would be wonderful, Bud. And if we had children, you'd be the father. Yes, the man is always the father, and the woman is always the mother. If it was any different, you'd be on People Are Funny. <laughs> Don't mind him, Susan. He's decided to be a big, dramatic actor. Oh, a big, dramatic actor, huh? Well, Costello, I might be able to get you a part in the new picture, The Iceman Cometh. They need an actor like me to be the leading man? No. They need a drip like you to empty the pan under the icebox. So long, Satchel. You know, there's only one thing wrong with Susan. She don't believe in give and take. What do you mean? She don't believe I've got anything to give, and she wouldn't take it anyway. <laughs> She'll be sorry when I'm a big dramatic actor. So you insist on being a dramatic actor, eh? Yep. Well, let's see how you'd play a dramatic scene with a girl. Now, let's pretend that I'm the uh, first girl you ever met in your life. I sure start out with a dog. <laughs> What kind of a girl am I? Oh. Am I pretty? Well, what difference does it make? I don't care if you're bull-legged, cross-eyed, just as long as you're a girl. Oh, you men are all alike. All right. All right. <laughs> you're, a, you're a 23-year-old girl, and you're living on the floor playing with your dog. How do you like that? I'm a girl, 23 years old, and I'm playing with my feet? Oh, come on. <laughs> now, remember, you're the girl, and I'm coming into you. Now, <clears throat> here I come. Hello. Why don't you answer the door? I'm just showing you that I'm hard to get. Oh, <laughs> that dope. Well, I'm coming in anyway. Ooh, 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 wait a minute. What, wait a minute. What are you screaming for? Oh, my, I'm taking a bath. You're taking a bath? Yes, and I'm having dinner. You eat? <laughs> you eat dinner in the bathtub? Sure, same time. I can wash myself in the dishes both together. <laughs> I'm through. Oh, no, Abbott. Please, please, give me one more chance. Well, all right. Now, here I come again. I'm going to teach you how to play a dramatic love scene with a girl. Now, <clears throat> come into my arms. No, no, Abbott. Costello, stop pushing me. Do you hear? <coughs> ah! Costello, you idiot. Why did you push me out the window? I had to, Abbott. I thought I heard my husband coming. Oh. We'll be back with the nonsense and the flick of an eyelash, folks, after a few comments on this subject. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please, at this phase of the exhibition. For within the confines of these walls, you're about to hear, for perhaps the first time, a revolutionary new idea in motoring. Over the broad highways of this great nation, we of PDQ, which I have the honor to represent, are determined that word shall spread among the alert, the intelligent, the leaders, please, please move in a little closer here, of a great new discovery in California. Not gold, not grable, not sunshine, but, and this is a historic moment, the clean windshield. The clean, bright, unsullied, sparkling windshield, courtesy of your neighborhood PDQ dealer. I tell you, friends, that somewhere tonight on this broad land, the rain is falling. The mud, the dirt, the grime, the tawdry byproducts of our civilization are clouding windshields of every make and model, paid for or not. Better check the oil, too, Lou. And if you, and you, and you will join me in a vast, driving, unbeatable, forward-moving parade of determined American men and women into your neighborhood PDQ station to get your windshield wiped, this will be a happier world. Abbott and Costello will carry on. Sings the Leo Robin lyrics approved by the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. It's June in January. That fall from a 
above. And here is the reason, my dear, your magical charm. The night is cold. The trees are bare. But I doing that old scrapbook. I'm going to prove to you that I'm a great dramatic actor. This book is full of clippings and parts and dramatic shows. Here's one of my big successes, The Man Who Came to Dinner. What did you do in The Man Who Came to Dinner? I put the sugar in the coffee. <laughs> that was a stirring performance. Oh. <laughs> what other parts did you play? Well, I played Napoleon. My greatest scene was when I was Napoleon and I lost the Battle of, uh, um, the Battle of, uh, Waterloo? No, thanks, bud. I'm not thirsty. <laughs> If you're such a great actor, why aren't you in demand at the studios? I am. Universal Studios have been calling me every day. Uh, why don't you go there? I don't like what they're calling me. <laughs> now, look. Costello, great actors have a sweet and touch. Why, when I kiss a girl on the stage, I kiss her hand. Yes. That's the Abbott touch. Mm -hmm. I speak lines with my back to the audience. That's the Abbott touch. Would you loan me $10? Why? That's the Costello touch. Oh, <laughs> Costello, you should study the great actors. Go to the theaters more I, often. I go every night at it. I take a bag of gumdrops and sit in the balcony. Well, I take chocolates and sit in the box. Don't that squash the chocolates? No, never mind. <laughs> never mind that, Costello. There's a lot of money in dramatic action. Do you really think you could do it? It's a cinch. Them actors don't know what they're doing. Last night I saw Peter Lorre do a scene. It went like this. Did you get the information, Mr. Myers? You didn't get the information, Mr. Myers? But you were supposed to get the information, Mr. Myers. There's a guy getting three thousand dollars a week, and he can't even get the information. <laughs> All right, Castell. Look, I'll be a regular fellow. If you want to be a dramatic actor, you'll need an agent. I'll take you to the best agent in town. Come on. <laughs> Sit right down, gentlemen. Mr. Whitney will be with you in a moment. Thank you. Abbott, do you uh, know this guy? Is he really a good agent? Well, he carries a lot of weight. He gets he gets steamed up. He pushes his way into the studio, uh, flattens the opposition, and paves the way for you. I call that an agent. I call that a steamroller. <laughs> well, Mr. Whitney is a great agent. He's got his foot in the door at MGM, his finger in the pie at Paramount, his... Ear to the ground of Eagle Lion, and he keeps one eye on Universal Lot. If he's going to handle me, he's got to do one thing. What's that? Pull himself together. <laughs> you gentlemen now. Go right in. I'll be with you in a moment, gentlemen. I'm talking to a client on the phone. What's that? You're tired of playing the same parts all the time? But you're not a romantic lead. I'm sorry, but you'll have to just keep playing the same kind of parts. Goodbye. Uh, who was that? Trigger, he's tired of playing the part of a horse. <laughs> I'd drop him as a client, but he owes me $500 I loaned him for gambling. <laughs> Trigger, the horse gambles? Sure, I see him at the track every day. He bets on the jockey. <laughs> Costello wants to be a dramatic actor. Costello, have you had any acting experience? Well, once I was with a traveling troupe, a road company. Did you spend much time on the road? I was on the road so much I had a white line down the middle of my back. <laughs> Talk then. 
Costello. Mr. Whitney, could you get Costello a dramatic part in pictures? Well, let's see. They need an actor to fight Humphrey Bogart in his new picture. How much salary would you want for that, Costello? Ten thousand dollars. Uh-huh. Well, here's another job. You'd have to hold up a stagecoach. How much would you want for that? Ten thousand dollars. Hmm. Here's another job. You'd have to make love to Ann Sheridan. She smothers you with kisses. How much would you want for that job? Would three dollars be asking too much? <laughs> Costello, if I get you a job in pictures, you'll have to develop finesse. You'll have to act with poise. I gotta act with boys? Certainly. Why can't I act with girls? Costello, you do act with girls, but you act with poise. How can I act with girls if I'm gonna act with boys? Costello, whenever you act with girls, they expect you to act with poise. Not the girls I go out with. You don't, you don't understand. We're talking about poise. Poise is important. Suppose you were asked to dance with a girl in a picture. You would dance with poise. Now he's got me dancing with boys. Now, all fellows do not dance with poise, but they should. If they do, it'll close down the palladium. <laughs> Costello, you're a little mixed up. Forget about poise. Let's put it this way. I want you to look well. Be debonair. Wear your clothes with grace. Oh, you want me to take and, 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 and could I have that again? Look, he wants you to wear your clothes with grace. Now, ain't that a pretty picture? Grace and me walking down the street in my clothes. I can hardly get into the street myself. Forget about grace, Costello. I'm concerned with your appearance. I insist that you dress Natalie. I'll be glad to. Where does Natalie live? <laughs> Natalie doesn't live anywhere. Natalie is not a girl. It must be one of those boys we were talking about. Oh, listen, listen, dummy. We're talking about appearance. Every actor in pictures dresses Natalie. Abbott, do you dress Natalie? Certainly. Where did your wife find out about this? <laughs> Mr. Costello, we're not discussing a woman. We're discussing clothes. Now, before I take you to the studio for a job, I want you to go to a good men's shop and get some decent attire. Good. I'll go right away. <laughs> and what should I get? Attire. Something to wear. Attire. <laughs> you, uh, you want me to wear attire? Certainly. How do you like that? Now he's got me walking down the street dressed in attire. <laughs> what are you talking about, Costello? Well, Abbott. I didn't mind it when you told me that I had to dance with boys. And I didn't object when you asked me to wear my clothes with Grace. And then you made me get Grace out of my clothes and put them on Natalie. But when you asked me to wear a tire so that I will have to go to a filling station every time I want to get dressed, I don't like that. You have not only impugned on my good name, but you have passed consumably on the good name of the two pants suit makers of America and besmirched the dignity of the Amalgamated Confederation of Needleworkers, and you have degraded the fair city of Los Angeles, style center of the USA, and the of all. to get a job. Oh, hello, AK. I brought over my new clients. They're loaded with TNT. Who are they, D.W.? A and C. A and C, P, U. Uh, you see, AK, Costello is anxious to play a dramatic part in pictures. Well, I'm making a picture called The Life of Sidney Greenstreet. Costello, you might play the part of Sidney Greenstreet. You both have the same shape. Hey, I spoke to Sidney Greenstreet on the phone last night, long distance. Person to person? No, stomach to stomach. <laughs> no, Mr. Costello, have you ever had any experience as a screen lover? Well, in my last picture, I hugged and kissed Ingrid Bergman. She was very happy. Ingrid Bergman was not in our last picture, Lou. That's why she was so happy. <laughs> Just step out on the sound stage, Costello, and I'll give you a screen test. What's that? We are shooting a picture. <laughs> I'm going to take my brother to see that picture. Oh, but the picture won't be out for six months. Neither will my brother. <laughs> How about this screen test for Costello? Now, if you want to make money in pictures, Costello, you've got to have polish. Every star needs polish. Our stars can't get enough polish. Now, do you know how to make money in pictures? Sure, sell polish to the stars. <laughs> can't tell by polish, he means work, hard work. Take Clark Gable. When he, when he makes love to uh, Hetty Lamar, it becomes work, just like selling newspapers. Any questions? I wonder if Gable will sell me his newsstand. <laughs> well, we are 
are ready for your test, Mr. Costello. Now remember, you are supposed to be Sidney Greenstreet. Now give it everything you've got. Light, camera, action! Come to my arms, all of you. At last we are alone, all of you. I'm over here, all of you. Kiss me. Oh, you are so brave. Rest your lips to mine. Aha! So it's you, you rat, making love to my girl. I've known about this all the time, but today I set a trap to you, and I left her here as a bait, and I caught you. If you set a trap with stuff like that, you'll catch me every time. <laughs> cop, cop, cop. Now let's go to the projection room and run the tank. What do you think of that test, A.K.? Doesn't Costello remind you of Sidney Green Street? That's it. What an idea. It's wonderful. You mean I get the job? No, send for Sidney Green Street. <laughs> Why don't I think of ideas like that? The life of Sidney Green Street starring Sidney Green Street. Abbott, get me out of here. <laughs> Don't go away, folks. Our stars will be back. But first, they'd like you to listen to this. Let's roll out the old PDQ welcome mat for a few new typical dealers. Guys who have recently joined the PDQ team of independent dealers. There's R.C. and R.W. Hardeen down in Long Beach. M.C. Miller in Chino. Theodore H. Smith out in Banning. Charles R. Stevens in Pomona. And Irving Fontaine and Melvin Silvera up in San Jose. Then, too, there's Albert J. Wyatt, Santa Monica. And Richard L. Berkemeyer of San Bernardino. All new PDQ dealers. Typical of the many, many automotive experts who are men in business for themselves. Substantial citizens of their own communities who, by their very act of selecting PDQ gasoline and other PDQ products to sell when they could be selling most any brand, have put their expert stamp of approval on the quality, the reputation, and the acceptance of PDQ automotive products. I'd like to have you get acquainted with the PDQ dealer in your neighborhood. You'll find he has a sincere interest and the know-how to take much better care of your car. And now the PDQ gas station gang fill her up Abbott and check the oil Costello. And now here are Abbott and Costello with the final word. I'll take it, Abbott. Hello? Yes? Is that so? That's terrible. Goodbye. What's the matter, Costello? Oh, my cousin Peter went to the license bureau at the city hall for a marriage license. He got shoved into the wrong line. What happened? He is now Cocker Spaniel, 17654. Oh, good night, folks. Good, good night, night, everybody. Don't forget to listen next Sunday morning to our new kitty show. Goodbye. Good night, everybody in Patterson. Wednesday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and Maddie Malnick Orchestra. This is Mike.